All right, this is assignment 34. This one deals with uh, building height and building area for a single-use multi-story building. So we're going to talk about what sections of code you need to read and how to use them. And we're going to talk about how to figure out the correct number of stories, the correct height, and the allowable area, including how to do the calculations for a frontage increase and the calculations for a sprinkler increase. So we're also going to talk about a couple other code issues like uh, what is accessory occupancy and how do you account for that. And I'm going to be jumping back and forth between the screen here and the IBC and then my desk for uh, doing some of the calculations. So our scenario for this one, we've got a multi-story Group M occupancy building with Type 2A construction. It is equipped with sprinklers and it has an accessory occupancy and the owners want to build the maximum number of stories. Uh, so we've got to figure out what is the maximum allowable tabular height and the number of stories. Uh, what is the tabular area factor? What is it and what does that mean? What is the equation for finding the actual allowable area? Then what is your increase due to frontage and what is your increase due to sprinklers? And we'll see that those last two, um, it's not exactly the same as it was in 2012 IBC where these were separate things. It's all sort of one big formula now and we've got to figure this all out. Okay, so the first question, what is the maximum allowable tabular height and number of stories? Anything dealing with height and area is Chapter 5 of the 2015 IBC. Uh, and so here we're in Section 504, and Table 504.3 gives you allowable building height. Uh, and you basically just read off the chart. So you find your occupancy classification over here. We are M, which is the first one. And then you've got sprinklered, or you've, sorry, you've got non-sprinklered and sprinklered. And so then you just follow across and read the table. So we are occupancy M with sprinklers and we are type 2A, so we're right here, 85 feet. There's no calculation to do, no sprinkler increase, it's just you read it straight off the table. So our maximum allowable tabular height is 85 feet. That's as tall as this building can be. So that's as tall as it can be in feet. There's also the number of stories, which is a different table. If we just scroll down to table 504.4, you can see allowable number of stories above grade plane. And this one is separated out a lot more, so we've got to scroll down and it's going to be hard to keep track, so let's just keep track of this column right here which is type 2A and M is right here so M with sprinklers type 2A is right here so we can have a number of a maximum number of five stories so our building can be 85 feet tall and it can have a maximum number of five stories alright so the next question is what is the tabular area factor so area is uh, section 506 and the uh, tabular area factors are all on table 506.2 and so again we find our occupancy classification and then come across to find uh, which column will give us our area factor so we're in the third column for type 2a construction if we come all the way down to group M then we've got three choices NS, S1, and SM this means non-sprinklered sprinklered if you are only a one-story building and a building SM is a building equipped with sprinklers and there are footnotes at the bottom of this table that explain what all those are so we are uh, group M with sprinklers we're in the third column so our tabular area factor is 64,500 so it's good to write this down 64,500 and that is not um, literally the allowable area per story uh, this is a factor that you use in the equation which we're going to get to next in some instances there are exceptions where it says the maximum floor area is limited to this number um, or plugging this number into the equation and solving for a one-story building but even in that case you have to take frontage into account um, so it's not exactly the allowable area per story this is just a factor that you use in the different equations and then um, when we get to the equation we're also going to need the non-sprinklered version even if your building has sprinklers you're going to end up using this non-sprinklered version or this non-sprinklered factor into your equation so write that one down as well so that one is going to be 21,500 so the next three questions what is the equation for finding the allowable area what is the increase due to frontage and what is the increase due to sprinklers so if we scroll down below that table we just looked at the next couple sections um, have different formulas for different scenarios like uh, single occupancy single story mixed-use occupancy, multiple story, that type of thing. So we're looking for, in, in our scenario, we've got single occupancy, multi-story building. And we get this formula right here. AA equals AT plus NS times IF, multiply that whole thing by SA. And then down here it tells you what all those variables are. And so what we have is the allowable area for the entire building is our tabular area, that was at 64,500, 
plus our non-sprinkler tabular area, that was the 21,500, multiplied by our frontage increase, and then multiply that whole thing by the actual number of stories not to exceed three. And there's a couple tricks, a couple things in here that you need to note. So the first is that it's not really an area plus a sprinkler increase plus a frontage increase like it used to be. It's just this one whole formula that lets you find the total area and your sprinklers <coughs> and your frontage increase factor in there in various ways. And so we're going to go through all the math in just a minute. The second thing is that though you can have your building, in our case was five stories, SA is limited to three. So when you're finding the actual allowable area, once you figure out all this stuff that's in in this first part of the equation, you still only multiply it by three. And here you see it also says for buildings equipped throughout with an automatic sprinkler system in accordance with this section, you can use um, up to four. And the thing is that that is very specific. This section is very specific about S13R sprinklers. And S13R is a residential only sprinkler. And if, actually, if we go back to that table, back to our allowable area table, you can see all these occupancies, A, B, E, F, all of them show sprinkler, non-sprinkler, sprinkler, non-sprinkler. Non when you get down to R, the R occupancies, you can see it changes to S13R because that's a that's a residential only uh, sprinkler use. So in the condition that you have maybe an R occupancy, and I think you're also limited to 60 feet, then you can use four. But in most scenarios, this SA for our equation is going to be three. All right, something else to note, the increase factor due to frontage is in accordance with this whole other equation. So just to get this little part right there, IF, you've got to come to this whole other section and do this long equation about adding up the frontages and the perimeters and, and the factors. And we're going to do that as well in just a minute. But uh, so the equation in general is easy, but just this one little part can take some time to do. And then one other note that actually doesn't apply here, but you see this one little footnote right here. No individual story shall exceed the allowable area as determined by using this equation, 5.2, using a value of SA equals 1. Um, and so what that is saying is that any single story can't be larger than using this equation and solving for one floor. And so in the, in the case that you have no frontage increase, if your frontage increase is 0, this portion right here becomes 0. And so the allowable area of that story becomes the tabular area times 1. So in that one case, in that one scenario where you um, are not including a frontage increase, then what's in the table is actually your maximum allowable per story, but you still should not look at that table as maximum allowable per story. That's not really the point of it. Okay, so let's go through and do all the math for actually finding out the allowable area, and it's all right here, so you can see the answer at the beginning, but this is our equation from section 506.2.3. This is equation 5-2. The allowable area is our tabular area plus our non-sprinkler tabular area multiplied by the frontage increase factor and multiply that whole thing by the allowable number of or the actual number of stories up to a maximum of three. So in the case that our building was two stories, that number would be two. In the case that our building is five stories, like it is in our, our example, that number is three. And if this was a residential project, there is a possibility that we could use four. So we fill this in really easily. Our tabular area was 64,500. Our non-sprinklered tabular area was 21,500. Our frontage increase works out to be 0.375, and we'll go through all of that in a minute. You multiply all that out, and the answer is 2,000, or I'm sorry, 217,687 square feet. All right, so then we've got to figure out what the actual frontage increase factor is. And most of this equation is easy. This is long and frustrating, and so all the work we're about to do is just to find this one value of our increase factor due to frontage, which is going to work out to be 0.375. So the formula for that increase factor due to frontage is F divided by P minus 0.25 multiplied by W divided by 30. And what these variables are is F is the sum of the length of all the walls with frontages greater than 20 feet. P is the perimeter of the entire building. And then W is a factor that is the sum of all the walls that have this length, that have a frontage greater than 20 feet, multiplied by what that frontage actually is, up to a max of 30 feet. So let's just go through, let's actually look at an example so this makes sense. So here we've got our floor plan of this building, and you've got the property lines, and you've got 
um, all these different dimensions that show you what the you know what the distance is to the property line and what these frontages are. And so the best way to keep track of this, I think, is to label each individual wall. And so just start at any point. I started here and went counterclockwise. I have no idea why, but basically we've got wall A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. And then we look at the frontages for each one. And so um, F is going to be the sum of the length of all the walls that have a frontage greater than 20 feet. And so we are not going to include B because the frontage is only 12 feet, and we're not going to include E because the frontage is only 12 feet. So if we look at that first part of the equation, F is that are the, the length of the walls that have a frontage greater than 20 feet, and P is the entire wall, is the entire perimeter. So P is the sum of wall A, B, C, D, all the way up through H, right? So you can see the length is 40 feet. 25 feet, 8 feet, right? So you got to figure out what the length of these walls are. The perimeter is obviously the length of all of them. F is the length of just those walls that have a frontage greater than 20 feet. So you can see the perimeter is A through H. The, the F factor is A through H, but we don't count B and we don't count E because those walls have a shorter frontage. And so you know just because you're not counting all the walls that this sort of FP has to be below 1. And then uh, it's you subtract 0.25 from that. The reason is because there's, if you read the code, it says you're only eligible for this frontage increase if if 25%, at least 25% of your perimeter has a frontage. So if this value were to end up at zero or below, then you weren't allowed to use this frontage factor increase anyway. So anyway, this works out to be 97. So if we sum up, you know, the length of wall A plus wall C plus wall D plus wall F plus wall G plus wall H, that works out to be 97. The sum of all the walls, the perimeter is 146. So that first part becomes 97 divided by 146 minus 0.25, and we get 0.41. All right, so the next part is W. This is that weighted average. And what this is, is the length of each wall multiplied by the frontage in front of that wall, and then you add all those up. And again, you exclude the walls that have a short frontage. The only trick here is that you can use a maximum of 30. So right here we see wall A is 40 feet long. So the W factor for wall A, let's say WA equals 40 multiplied by the frontage, which is 35, but you can use a maximum of 30. So 40 times 30, that's 1200. And so then you've got to do that for all the walls that again, have a frontage greater than 20 feet. So B, we exclude just like we did in that first calculation. Wall C is eight feet long and it's got a frontage of 20 feet. So W factor for wall C is gonna be the length eight multiplied by 20. That's gonna work out to 160. So you do that all the way around. All right, so you've gotta do that for all those walls. So in this case, we excluded wall B and E. So you do that factoring that we just did for wall A, C, D, F, G, and H. When you have all those values, you add them up and then you divide that whole sum divided by the perimeter of just those walls, just those same those same F walls, the walls that have a frontage less, I'm sorry, a frontage more than 20. So that all works out to be 27.5. And then, so our factor, you know, our frontage increases, F divided by P minus 0.25 multiplied by W over 30. We found that first part up here is 0.41. So 0.41 multiplied by 27.5 divided by 30 you end up with 0.375. And we can come back to our equation, which we already saw earlier, and plug that in and get our total allowable area. So again, that's our allowable area for the entire building. If you wanna figure out what the allowable area is per story, remember it said you use this equation and plug in one. So that's the same as now just dividing this number by three. You get 72,562 square feet. That's maximum allowable per story, um, but in that case, you'd only build three stories and you are allowed to build up to five. So you're allowed to sort of divvy this up, this two, 217,000 square feet as any way you want. You just can't go above 72,560 in any one story. All right, and one last thing to note, um, it says in the assignment, you've got an accessory occupancy and it shows it here on the plan and it just says accessory occupancy. It doesn't give you any dimensions and it doesn't give you any type of information about what group it is or anything like that. And the point is just for you to know that if it's an accessory occupancy, you don't have to factor that into your calculation. So 
you use just the main occupancy of the building. So mixed use, um, mixed use and occupancy is section 508. This is an important one to know. Um, table 508.4, I think I have another video on that, is going to tell you all your required separations. But this also tells you how to deal with things like um, accessory and incidental use. So accessory occupancies are right here, 508.2. They tell you some of the requirements for them, like I think it has to be 10% max of the floor area, that type of thing. But the important thing to note is that the allowable height and allowable area, you basically just use the main occupancy. So if you have an accessory occupancy, it does not count as mixed use for in, in terms of finding your area and using the equation for mixed use multiple story. So it makes things easier. You don't count it, you just count the main occupancy. And I'm using the uh, free 2015 IBC Online, but I actually have the version with the commentary, which is $10 a month. I highly recommend it. Uh, you only need to get Volume 1. They've got Volume 1 and Volume 2, but Volume 1 covers, I think, the first 16 chapters, which is pretty much all you're going to need for the, for the uh, ARE. And it's $10 a month. You just have to make sure that you cancel. Um, but the commentary is incredibly helpful in explaining how these formula works and and what this stuff actually means. So it's it's definitely a, a great resource if you're studying for the ARE or if you use this stuff on a daily basis. You know, in my business I'm more IRC than IBC, but the commentary is still very helpful. And if you haven't been to my website, please check it out, hyperfinearchitecture.com. I've got a lot of free and some not free ARE 5.0 resources and software training and a blog and all kinds of fun stuff like that. So hyperfinearchitecture.com. Thanks for watching.